Hello everyone, welcome to Inspiration with Nev, your channel for inspiration, motivation and creation. It's the month of December and, and in a moment we are going to be closing the year 2023. I don't know how the year has been for you. Maybe it's been very, really good or maybe it's been that bad and I understand. But something I have to tell you today is you are alive and being alive you have to thrive. Thrive I said and not just survive. That's why today I'll be sharing with you my journey of self-discovery, the place from where my purpose knew power, my emotion and my confidence got really stable. You want to have a seat. You want to take a seat. Because when I'm done, you will be up on your feet and ready for a go in your life more than ever before. Welcome back. My name is Musi Mezaidi Pakere. I am a Christian leader, a medical doctor, a researcher, an editor, a designer, an author, a singer and composer, a baker, a farmer, a woman in business. I am a mother and a wife. The things I do and how I'm able to do the things I do. All of that are in a package just for you on this channel. That's why I invite you. If you're not done so, stay tuned by subscribing. Click on the like button. You're going to have great fun on this channel. I am very, very interested in you. And I want you to be the very best of yourself. I think I was born a multitasker. I was born with great skills from childhood and something about myself and childhood and i think it's i see it with many children i was so free oh my god oh my goodness as a child i was so free i did the things that i wanted to do the things that i loved to do the things that i things came actually my activities came from my heart and then i i, I performed them at the age of two i started singing you know i had this love for music this once i was told and i had a passion for colors you know i just used to like to mix colors you know colors of anything either clothes or chairs i did not like this other so i was that little girl who pick the chair cover or the backrest as we used to call it i don't know if that's the real name <laughs> i'll be i was that two year old who is going to pick the chair cover you know and place it back pick the cup that has fallen and place it back finish eating and take my plate to the kitchen hmm, that was me and as i grew i noticed that i loved creating things okay so some things that were considered as waste material by the time i was five i'll, I'll rather take those things and you know i'll try to construct something out of it and and at the age of six i started reading my dictionary hmm, dictionary yes yeah, so dictionary in fact i think as much as i remember i can remember that was my favorite book before i started going to storybooks i started reading the dictionary okay my mom was uh, an english english teacher in the secondary school secondary and high school and i i you know she used to, to emphasize some words and she say it's, it's not it's not it's not love it's love it's love you know all those ah uh and uh sounds she makes sure that she emphasizes them you know and i have fun with that so i i got reading the dictionary i was reading the dictionary and by the age of seven i started writing i wrote my first poem 
I saw from the date that I, I wrote in that poem. That's when I remember. I think I was in class four, maybe grade four somewhere. And I started writing my own poems. And I wrote till, till, till I was a teenager. For singing, I sang till, till I was a teenager. For creative works, they kept on coming. You know, the design stuff kept showing, kept showing. I had this passion for research. Like, I always wanted to know why this is this. You know, what? I always ask myself questions. And whenever I was told something, I would not just take it like that. I would not just swallow it like a pill down my throat. I always like to find out and find out. So I was a little girl who asked questions and questions and questions. And I was free, you know, I was free. I kept doing my stuff. I kept doing my stuff. The first job I told my mother, you know, dream career, when you ask a child, what do you want to become in future? The first thing I told my mom was a farmer. Mm. A farmer. That's what I told my mom. I think I was five years old then. And then when I was seven years old, one day I told her mom, I want to be a doctor, a medical doctor. And as far as I remember, those are the only two careers, you know, I told my mom, no, those childhood careers. What do you want to be? I want to be a pilot. I want to be this. Yeah, that, those were my two. <laughs> those are the two I told my mom. And today I'm both, I'm a medical doctor. I'm a farmer. Oh, it feels so good. I kept being free. I thank God I was blessed with an amazing father, an adorable, a wonderful mother who accepted me, you know. So my environment didn't really, my immediate environment, especially as a child, you know, it didn't really influence me against the things that were coming from my heart. I was not shunned. I was not pressed down at every point in time. Of course, I used to do well in school. Maybe that was why. <laughs> I used to do well in school. So no one's going to say, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. I was just a little girl of my kind. And I maybe was not very regular with all the regular things that my 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 friends will do. You know, I will not prefer to play a lot. I will not prefer to watch movies a lot. And I didn't tell you something. My favorite TV show, my favorite TV show, worse the news <laughs> this one is gonna blow your mind my favorite tv show was the news and guess what i wasn't watching the news because i was interested in the headlines oh cameroon oh africa oh antarctica no i was interested in the mixing you know the combination of words i just i just i just i was just passion it was just a passion for me you know when i heard words being mixed together and it was like oh Come on, say it, come on, say it. And I watched the news with a paper and a pen. I still have some of those notes. And one day, maybe, I'm going to show it to you. <laughs> I watched with the notes. I used to like new words. You know, that we're talking about a six-year-old. And that was something, you know, that was a writing skill that was bu uh, building in me. And so by that seven, when I started writing, I had a huge vocabulary, all right? And I kept on growing. When I got to my teenage years, I would say that's the time when I was actually getting more exposed to the world around me. You know, the reality of mixing with society and hearing much of what society will have to tell you. And at that time, I started having a struggle almost through my teenage years. And I had a struggle like I, I didn't know whether I'm normal. And sometimes I'll ask myself, Maeve, are, are you normal? Because I have a passion for something and I don't want to let it go, all right? I had that fight and there was a need of self-discovery because at some point in time I was, I didn't know exactly who I was. And that definition, you know, that definition suffered a lot from, you know, what people told me. Okay, like in school, I was general. I was a general. I was like all round student. Okay, so you could not easily say, "Oh, she's going in the direction of art. She's going to the direction of the science." In language, I was okay. In mathematics, you know, all the subjects, all the subjects, and it was like that throughout. I remember in when I was in form four, when I was in form four, that was in secondary school, and I had to, I had to leave some art subjects you know i collected all the art subjects at the end of the year i collected the art subject and then i collected the science subject so it was like okay so what are you going to do with it and sometimes just the comment you know that people made to me they kind of frustrated me they kind of made me feel like maybe you're maybe you're abnormal you know like uh well, you know, you want to take everything for yourself uh you're, you're sometimes some people even say you're wicked you know 
like seriously like you want to take everything what do you want you don't want others to have anything and then the worst one was when i had to perform you know maybe i had to sing maybe i had to do something creative a decoration okay when you watch my background <laughs> all of that is me all right all of that is me so if you want to think of what what is she talking about design and stuff oh my background is me and there's more you're going to be seeing all right so i will do it and when i do this thing sometimes you know some comments i get i i do i didn't get positive comments and which i cherish much cherished much but sometimes some of those negative comments you know as long as i didn't have a self a definition of myself i was i was i was frustrated you know sometimes you get feedback on people and then you just get frustrated and while i was growing up i was thinking what should i leave what should i leave you know what should i get off what should i what should i let go let go the music just let go the design the creativity let go the writing but the truth was when i sat alone you know i'm a believer in the lord jesus christ when i sat alone and those times when i get you know i get filled you know i get filled with the holy spirit it's it 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 got it soaks my spirit soaks my soul and i feel power in my body I tell you, I lie down in bed and I have ideas of new cakes to make, new recipes to make, new designs, new clothes to sew. And I mean, it's how should I handle myself? And inside me, I knew I wanted to be a medical doctor. So for that, I had to go to school. You know, I had I knew that I had to be a medical doctor. I had that, that passion. I hated to see people suffer, you know, and I also didn't just want to be that doctor who just treats people when they are sick already i wanted so i believe that one could be healthier you know one could be healthier i had a passion for you know food you know not not really eating the food you know but knowing food knowing food nutrition classes were kind of my favorite classes you know i would like I'm, i just i just like the knowledge of it all and so as i was growing up i started asking myself the question Mev, what's your definition? What, 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 what do you have to do? What don't you have to do? And it was really difficult for me. Sometimes I walk in the street and I'm talking to myself. Okay. Of course, you couldn't think I was psychotic. I'll do that when I'm alone, you know, when I'm sure that <laughs> the coast is clear and I was very conscious of myself. Okay. In all my struggle, I realized that getting a definition to myself was never going to come from others you know if i had to wait for what others say you know what others perceive how others looked at me before getting being able to define myself i noticed that the more i i i stayed on that the more i expected anything from others you know the more frustrated i was i started looking inside i started looking like inside myself what do i feel inside what do i of course i had time to pray and i was like god show me who am i and uh, the answers that came from inside me was that i was unique and i didn't have to drop the things that i was doing because i was doing the things effortlessly you know passionately the passion would just flow the effort would just i realized that the answer was inside of me and um, I started accepting i was what i was doing was of acceptance like the things you know th those things that were resonating from inside me i started accepting them accepting them and personally i realized that i did not have to stop doing those things that i was passionate about they made me happy they made me fulfilled i knew that i knew that i knew i i, I breathed some my husband says he says, honey, you breathe songs. Okay. I knew that I knew that I had to do those things. I have songs and those songs, I believe, need to go out, you know, to heal the world. And with the ability, the passion I have for songs, I've been able to start up choir, you know, everywhere where I go and there's no choir, I'll be able to start up choir somehow, you know, and sing. And there's a big one for you soon. Just watch out and stay tuned. And... I will write, I will write. In school, my friends would take up my books, they will read and they'll be inspired. And I read a verse in the Bible, the holy book, the scriptures, which made me realize that the things that were inside me, they were not just for fun. And 
Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16, it changed me. It says, a man's gift will make a way for him and bring him before great men. And I understood from there that whatever was to me a gift, whatever was my giftedness will bring me before great men. And I tell you, I've not known, I don't know what they call poverty. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. I, I, I don't know how to be lazy. I don't know how to be poor because from my childhood, the things I've done, I do, you know, the music, the writing, mm, somehow brings me income. Somehow, somehow bring me income. <laughs> I remember myself, I, I think I was like, I was about 13 years, you know, a, a father in church giving me some money, you know, so he asked me for a budget, you know, to come decorate his house for was their wedding anniversary, I think. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, well, I got some money from there. <laughs> and uh, growing up, as I made up my mind, as I was discovering myself and looking at myself from inside, the 10 point in my journey of self-discovery actually came when I, I made that decision. I was very empowered by the word of God. And I made a decision to live my life from inside, not from outside, okay? Not from outside. The things that I was doing were not hurting anybody. They were not hurting me, okay? They were not causing some disorder in the society. And they were making me happy. And I was like, okay, so why forfeit it? Why forfeit it? So I gave myself to learning from childhood, I had this passion for excellence, like excellent. I want to excel. I want to be the best at everything that I'm doing. Cleaning the floor. I remember a day in grade two, in grade three, that's primary school, in primary school class three, as we call it. We're cleaning the class and I was on a colon, you know, by all by myself. And that colon had a particular spark because I will clean, change the water, clean, change the water, clean. Okay, I was actually mopping. And, uh, you know, one of my friends actually came to me. I was like, Musi, that's how they were calling me in those days. And like, why, why are you cleaning the floor like this? You, you just wonder they should come and blame us that we have not cleaned the floor. I said, oh, my dear. Sorry, that's my standard. You can only meet up. I can't come down to your standard. Okay. And he said, hey, you're cleaning the floor as if it's your classroom. I said, well... It's work to do. You want to do something, do it with your heart. Do it from your heart and do it with your heart. Okay. I grew up liking that excellence. And that's what has pushed me today, you know, to study. I have a wide field of, of knowledge, you know. Everything I do, I try to do some research or take a course, get a diploma, you know. Get a diploma in, in, in the cooking domain, in the food domain, in the in the skincare body makeup domain in i mean i just want to get trained i just want to get trained you know beside the other things that i do beside the other things that i do being a christian leader being a medical doctor all of that i was trained for okay the other things being a mother being a wife i like to take a course just so you know know how to do it better and uh, i decided to leave from my heart and I think that it does everybody who takes that pathway. To discover yourself, you must look inside. What did God put in me? I read a lot of quotes and one day I wrote one that said, what, God, what you need to survive in this world is inside you. It's inside you. You just need to search down there. You just need to look deep inside you and you're going to find it. And when you find it, you have to express it. You will have to overcome the excuses. You have to overcome the, the laziness. You have to overcome the, the, you know, the, the comments, the comments. I believe a lot of people could do things, you know, I get to talk with people and sometimes it's just fear. It's just fear. Or like, oh, what my friends say? What will my family say? What will, what will, what will, man, you can do that as a child, but as an adult, you need to put food on your table. I know how my skills help me. I know how my farm benefits me. So don't to tell me, you don't need to come and use a cane on me that go to the farm. It's coming from inside. I'll do it. Okay. You don't need to come and get a cane on me that go sing a song. I mean, the songs, by the way, I breathe them. I breathe. I breathe songs like 
if I have to sing a song on anything now, and I'll just start singing. <laughs> Those moments of inspiration. It's not like at every point in time I do everything, okay? But there's a spirit inside me, and he works at different times in me to do different things. And I chose to submit myself. I've chosen to submit myself to him and to do the things that are coming from my heart. I just do it. I just enjoy it. I just have fun with it. One of my 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 little sisters, you know, she told me, Nev, how come your life is so fun? Like you just enjoy everything and everything is just it feels like everything is good for you. And one of my friends also told me in school and she was like, Do you ever have a problem in your life? I'm like, oh is there anybody in this world that does not have a problem? Eh? That does not have a problem. But I mean, the problems, the challenges of life are there. The ups and downs are there. The waves and the storms while you're peacefully sitting in your boat, they come knocking. Okay. But you need to have your stability inside. And for me, my self-discovery, my self-discovery made me understand that God has given me what I need. It's inside of me. And I don't need to stop. If I feel that I have to stop something, I'll stop it. Okay? But I have no feeling. As long as I have no feeling, I'm not just going to let my environment, you know, define me and say, okay, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this because you, you know, because you're a medical doctor, you don't have to do this. Who says so? And sometimes I tell people, okay, when I go do my, 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 when I send out my factory, my, my factory products, my tray bowls and all the like, or when I do my cakes and sell, do I give you some money? When I do my fun, do I come and give you? I do it for myself. When you find out, when you make that discovery within, the next thing is, the next thing too is accept it. Accept it. Like, accept. I had to accept myself. I had to accept that as a doctor who has the passions that could drive me, you know, crazy. If I don't do them, I have to accept myself. I'm multi-talented. I'm multitasking. It's, it's a gift. Everybody will not easily do that. Now, how best can I, you know, how can I make myself better in this multitasking ability? I had a study. I had a study. I had a study. I studied project management. Just to know how to break, you know, I've studied project, project management. Just to know how to break, you know, you have a big thing and how to break it into small bits and make them achievable. I study. I studied stress management because doing a lot of things, you know, with a lot of demands that life offers to you. You have to be the doctor. You have to be the wife. You have to be the, the mother. You have to be the, you have to be everything. Okay. And lots of expectations of you from here, here and there. You have to be the daughter of my parents, of my siblings. All right. And I had to take a course. I had to take study on stress management because I wanted to educate myself on how to manage this many things. So when you, Find that answer, that yearning. So find, discover your yearning, all right? So listen to your yearning. Find out what's inside me. One, listen to your yearning. Two, accept it. Accept it. That's who you are. You can run away from it. Some people do run away from it, and when they are 60 years old, they come back to it. Mm, they come back to it, and it's they've lost energy, you know? The Bible says the glory, you know, the glory of a, of a young man is his strength. They're strong. That's our glory, you know. And the glory of all men is their hoary head. Oh, my God. It's a wonderful experience to come to. And after you accept yourself, the next thing is find yourself. Find yourself. Study. Study. How is it done? How can I get better in this domain? And you get to learn. Meet people. Meet people who share that same passion, that same interest. Read books. Watch tapes, documentaries, whatever it is. That's going to educate you on what is inside here. People can be, you know, people could be sitting in their houses and they don't know that anything is happening. But once the thing is exposed, mm, 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 mm. Who is talking for? Who is talking against? Who is talking mixed? You know, all everybody will say what they want to say, but you must encourage yourself. Encourage yourself. 
encourage yourself continue 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 as you keep encouraging yourself get connected get connected with people who share like passion people who have the same mindset don't go for the wrong company the spoil the drain the wrong company practically dries your bones it does not just dry your flesh it drives you down to the bones don't skip the wrong company you know that company that always criticizes what you're doing that company that always tells you you cannot make it that company always tells that always tells you you were born for this class you can never cross it that company quits it i didn't say negotiate it quits it because if you have to live in the free, you don't need things that are keeping you bound. All right. You know, staying with the wrong company is like, um, you're chained, you know, you're bound by something and you're trying to be released, but you are staying in the chains. You have the possibility of taking your hands off, taking your hands off, but you leave your hands there. Okay. The handcuffs are open. You know, it's not like, and you stay there, please. So these are my tips for your journey to self-discovery. Find your yearning, accept yourself, release yourself, train yourself, encourage yourself, connect with the right company. And what else is keep moving.